there are certain things sisters i love you and i'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart if you listen to me you will be saved if you are stubborn and you don't listen i guarantee you you would have defined a path that will lead to tears are we together now say amen sisters here doesn't mean people who maybe ladies who are not yet married it, it, just anybody really there are certain things a lady must find in a man otherwise don't marry him write it down i've upgraded my curriculum on this you will you will be interested to hear the things i'm going to tell you now a thorough upgrade just four things i've summarized every cry of every sister to four things whether you know it or not just believe me any brother that does not come along these lines is dangerous sisters what did i say he is shout it i didn't say he's bad i said he's dangerous i don't care whether the brother is joshua selman i don't care whether the brother has a bible on top of his head if these four things are not in place your home will be a disaster and your children will be a disaster ready number one you have no business talking about relationship and marriage with any man who is not god fearing don't be too fast allow me to properly define what i mean by god fearing notice i didn't say born again because that thing has been abused in the 21st century a born again brother is not one who came out for altar call and you witnessed him raising his hand that's not born again god fearing the primary reason why society is in decadence listen to me is because the men are not god fearing the fear of the lord is not believing in god there are two different things faith in god and the fear of god are two different things i can have faith in god and not fear god are we together now yeah there are many faith-filled christians who are not god fearing and listen look at this i am a christian i am a child of god my life is governed by a reference listen the bible is my reference are we together now my decisions are made with respect to this reference so when you tell me you are a husband what reference are you leading your life and your family with so many people come to church but there is no reference upon which their lives their ideologies and their decisions come from so they just hilariously come up with concepts and ideas about parenting and they have destroyed the lives of innocent women there are many women in the last two weeks the number of married women have had to counsel and the pain that the average married women woman goes through in their home is unbearable they laugh in the open but they are dying in the secret and the sad thing is that most of the men are born again some are even bishops priests sincere people deacons what does it mean to be god fearing to be god fearing number one means to have reverence respect for god not just to believe in god but to have reverence for god let's hurry up number two to be god fearing means to submit to the ways of god submit to the word of god as the final authority in all matters write this one down to submit to the word of god as the final authority in all matters not some matters you so you don't mix the word of god and culture in our place this is how we do it no in our village this is how it is done this this diversity of concepts has largely destroyed many good men turned them into beasts and animals because there is no centralized scripture based reference 
upon which their activities are carried out listen let me tell you something there is no man that is bad when they tell you a man is bad when a woman looks at her husband when a young lady looks at someone she's in a relationship with and says you are bad there is, the concept of bad does not exist there is no man who is bad every man is like a video playing out his mindset it is the thinking the ideology of a man that expresses him as bad that is why an robber can carry the same body and in two years the arm robber has become a pastor the body did not change something changed the same hand that once held a gun and was brutal over people now holds a bible and is saving sinners there is nothing called a bad man i've interacted with some people who are supposedly bad some of them old enough to be my parents and i've discovered that intrinsically every man is good their approach was wrong and so their life became a script playing out some of you are looking at me now brothers as sincere as you are you are about to replay the same script if you don't change you will be shocked to see how you will find out that what you desire let me tell you there is no bad man who married his wife to destroy her are you hearing me nobody i'm a man i've been a man all my life i'm not just being a man now so you have to listen to me i know exactly men are not bad people but there are concepts that have turned men into beasts are we together a god-fearing person the word of god i always give this analogy when i'm counseling people listen if wife come if watch this this is my wife and i want the television to be here everybody look up this is a television now i want the tv to be here and my wife says my husband this tv has to be there there is a conflict of ideas now to be god fearing means both of us must have the unashamedness or at least i to say what does the word of god say about tv is the word of god says there should be no tv what happens to my will i fold my will to let the will of god prevail there is no family that will suffer when the man can accept the will of god the problem is usually the will of the man and i look at her and say what part of your dowry didn't i pay you talk to me i will slap you forget that i'm a man of god i'm a man it's just that i'm of god you talk to me i will slap you are we together hmm. and you know men we are very arrogant people we can be entering hellfire and claim that is ac we are and drag people in trouble until we get in there and then we say well I, I did not exactly understand the configuration of a man is such that we have a lot to protect that's why submitting to the ways of god is very hard that's why in most crusades women are more the men don't come they would rather watch from the television and kneel down and receive the same miracle but to come and be healed they feel is an insult i am a director of a and b and c but tonight i pray that god will raise men who can submit i love the song the worship team sang look there is nothing as excellent as a man especially a young man who has submitted to the will of god in every matter it doesn't matter how it stings my ego once the word of god contradicts my concept i bend i don't look for an explanation no sir it is being god fearing that will make you never to carry your hand and beat your wife you are angry but what did the bible say about wives it said treat them as unto weaker vessels so when you slap your wife and you are boiling you are not just a stupid man you are not submitting to the ways of god when you love your wife just because she made a nice hair and say hey, hey now you are talking you are you are carnal number one that is not even true love because the bible says husbands love their wives as christ love the church so the thing is to study how christ loved the church he said while we were yet sinners undeserving unqualified in due season christ loved us so when a man has to punish his wife to end his love by dressing well i'm not against good dressing i'm not against looking well i'm not against all of these things but if you force your 
your wife to have to succumb to those things the day she sees another woman who has those things much more than her she becomes insecure because she knows how unpredictable your love is the fear of the lord thank you my dear many men do not fear god principles of parenting do you know that there are families and there are cultures for instance that teach that a man can beat his wife at least once or twice so that when he beats her she will know that this is not a stupid is not a sissy i mean it's it's a show of masculinity i senior you in age in strength in whatever it is in salary and you joke with me i beat you once then i ask you for forgiveness i'm forgiving you you are forgiving me but the memory of what happened will keep you in place that has worked for a lot of people but i hate it not i don't care whether it works or not it's not consistent with the word of god the word of god is not about what works or not it's about what god says if i apply the word of god and it does not work i will still remain there not because of the result it produces but because that's what came out of the mouth of god that's what it means to be an ardent follower of the word sisters are you listening unfortunately now we we live in a generation where and please don't don't find this insulting many of our sisters some of you are here looking at me now you are so gullible just anybody just comes wherever he has small money small whatever you are praying in tongues yet you are not allowing what you are praying to inform the decisions i am shocked when some ladies bring some brothers to me and say i like him i want to say where did you keep your brain i taught you so many things look at the kind of person you are dragging completely antichrist in his approach why do you love him he loves me is he a christian i uh, he's a nice he comes around listen let me tell you something another wife uh, well just for this example you are not permitted to marry another wife listen watch this everyone do you know the only thing you cannot change in your life is god and your wife and children you are supposed to change your cloth after some time you are permitted as lovely as this cloth i'm wearing is after a few months it will fade and i'll throw it away and sew another one so it's amazing how you can love something now and hate it but the bible says you are staying with that woman so there's no you can't change her like a cloth meaning you must find out from god what he must put in you and her to make her remain fresh if you change clothes change phone change car and yet the bible says you cannot change your wife you must find out lord and the woman is growing old so it means you must do something to me that is beyond the physical to keep me faithful I told you tonight my heart is, is indicting a good matter we are just warming the plane we must reach that altitude this night in the name of jesus christ bless you. god fearing sisters i want you to bond this revelation the first thing to look at in a man is not the car he brought hello say hi hello because some of you if we don't press you like this you know i've discovered in church that many people don't listen as you are talking like this they are looking at you they are even writing but their hearts are already made up no sir i'm saving you trouble you will thank me for it not everything that glitters is gold and don't let anyone pressure you whether parents or friend and say after all what is there he can take care of us what is your idea of care buy you things are we together a god-fearing man a man he doesn't have to be a pastor uh -uh. god-fearing has nothing to do with a pastor god-fearing has nothing to do with praying eight hours a man can pray eight hours and not be god-fearing I told you there is a difference between believing God and having a reverence for God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Hmm. The fear of God. Submitting to the authority of the word. Submitting to the authority of the word. So you may be Igbo, you may be Hausa, you may be Yoruba, you may be Kaduna State, whatever, Northern, you may be from another nation of the world. It does not matter. 
the issue of this is how we do it in our place this is how it is in our place our fathers used to our this used to happen no 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 people do those kinds of nonsense things do you know how this refusal to conform to the word of god has brought trouble between people it's the reason why many marriages are not working parenting so the man has his idea on how to raise children he got it from his friends he got it from bad people are we together now do you know the average young child was not really trained by his parents he just lived with them it's one thing to live with me but it's another thing to be mentored and trained by me that you are going around in my house does not mean i'm training you the bible said train up a child it didn't say live with him many people are living with their children but they are not training their children so their children get the training from their friends bad books bad magazines rubbish films nonsense photos and pictures and by the time that child is 10 or 11 years somebody else is training him how does a train move they are connected the train will not move against where the head of the train is moving so train a child means set the pace don't tell them to do it lead them in doing it you don't ask a child to buy you cigarettes and then as he drops he say if i catch you with cigarettes i will kill you by myself i've told you smoking is very bad forget that i'm doing it you are not training the child 